So as audiences hopefully race to theaters this weekend for the sixth installment of Fast and Furious, Universal is already back on the road prepping Fast and Furious 7. In fact, that's become a common promotional technique these days, playing up the next film in a franchise as the current one is opening. Perhaps studios hope news that the franchise is continuing with or without you will cause a bandwagon effect? Either way, Fast and Furious star and producer Vin Diesel has been doing his part, last week announcing that Fast and Furious 7 will take place in the Middle East. And Tokyo? Why circle back to the Far East? That's because rumor is that Fast and Furious 7 will take place after the franchise's third installment, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. Yes, for those of you who missed it, films 4 through 6 take place before Tokyo Drift, conceivably so that popular character Han, who was killed in Tokyo Drift, could stick around. What is it with guys named Han? As a fan of Sung Kang's work myself, I am going to be a little bummed this means he won't be reappearing in Fast and Furious 7. Know who else is leaving? Director Justin Lin, who brought his Better Luck Tomorrow star Kang into the franchise when he took over for Tokyo Drift. Lin drove the Fast and Furious franchise to new heights, helming flicks 3 through 6, and even though Universal is sorry to see him depart one of their top franchises, they do plan to keep him at the studio, as he's already signed to direct a film about the LA riots, as well as the secretive sci-fi comedy Subdivision. But Warner Brothers has also signed Lin, where they hope to have him launch a franchise for them based on Patrick Lee's Sam Dryden series. Fast and Furious 7 might also lose Dwayne Johnson, who has said that if Universal insists on fast-tracking the shoot for the flick with a summer start date, he'll be unable to participate due to the filming of Brett Ratner's Hercules. And while that news might lead some to question Johnson's taste in projects, Brett Ratner? The actor has something of a safety net as Universal is planning a Fast and Furious spin-off focusing on his character Luke Hobbs. Then again, perhaps Fast and Furious 7's August start date gives Johnson the time he needs to make both flicks. But while Fast and Furious 7 does have some losses, it has some gains as well. Replacing Lin is horror maestro James Wan, who's been very vocal about wanting to move into new genres. Question is, will his son Insidious fans move with him? Another bold addition to the franchise is none other than Jason Statham, who first made his own mark in Hollywood with his own driving franchise, The Transporter. Rumor is he'll cameo in Fast and Furious 6 as a tease for the next flick, where he'll play the villain. That might be a much-needed change of pace for Statham, whose box office numbers seem to have stalled. However, his other franchise, The Expendables, continues to do well, and Statham is surely happy to land another one after he didn't get the Transformers 4 gig. Actually, Statham and girlfriend Rosie Huntington Whiteley are both out, with Mark Wahlberg and Last Airbender's Nicola Peltz in. Yes, the mention of both Ratner and Peltz in this video underscores how the weird dynamics of franchises inexplicably extend some careers. Hollywood seems to have a short memory, but do audiences? And can audiences accept change? Fast and Furious 7 looks to represent the biggest change for the franchise yet. Do you think you'll still want to ride shotgun? Write your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.